For as long as I can remember, whenever I've heard or read this gospel passage, I've always thought about Niagara Falls. You too, right? No? <laughs> Why? Because I was born and raised in Buffalo, New York. And if you know anything about Buffalo, or if you've ever traveled and you were going to make a trip, say you were on vacation and you were going to go to that area, what would be the number one sight to see, I believe, called one of the seven wonders of the natural world, Niagara Falls? Ask me how many times growing up I remember going to Niagara Falls. I mean, I, can, I, can't re, I can't remember the family ever. When I got old enough to drive, and I had a girlfriend, uh, it was a nice little trip to make, you know, not too far away. But it was funny. It was just this place down the road that we took for granted. And I hope you know why I say this gospel reminds me of Niagara. Although I do have another example I thought I could use just more recently. And just a couple of weeks ago, I learned that two of my fellow priests were coming back from the East Coast. I think they were going to some kind of a class reunion, and they were driving back, and they stopped overnight in Buffalo not to go to Niagara Falls, but to go to the more famous place, the Anchor Bar. <laughs> no? Anchor Bar is the home of buffalo wings, which in Buffalo, we don't call them buffalo wings. They're just wings. But same kind of thing. I mean, it's the same kind of example. Do you think the wings and uh, the Anchor Bar are better than the ones in it? They're actually probably just more expensive because that place is famous now. All these little examples, I mean, they're the, they're the, they're, they point out to us of that, that thing we have in life, that, that I, what do I want to call it? Oh, that we have to, that desire to go to special places, to famous places, to think that we can find God only in those great shrines or, or holy places and forgetting about finding the Lord's presence right around us. A prophet is not without honor, except in his native place. You know, we don't see the Lord. I mean, Jesus, if he, it says he goes to his, we're assuming it's, it's Nazareth or the surrounding area. He's going home. And Jesus is Niagara Falls. I mean, Jesus is something incredible. He is the presence of God the fullest presence of God that the world has ever experienced because he is God incarnate. And there's something about him that they, that, that they see. His words astonish them. You know, his works impress them, but it's just Jesus. He's a carpenter. What do you think he is, a rocket scientist? He's a carpenter. And his mother is here, and his sisters live down the road, his family members. This is Jesus. Couldn't be anything special. Oh, special. We'd have to go to Jerusalem for something special. Jerusalem is the city of God. Maybe if we go there, maybe if we go in the temple, then we'll find God, not in this person. A prophet is not without honor, except in his native place. So it's about appreciating your native place. Now, I have to say, I've traveled, and I've had great opportunities, and I've taken advantage because people love to travel. I've taken advantage over the years of, of having groups uh, and pilgrim, sometimes more vacation things, but sometimes pilgrimage groups. We've gone to the Holy Land. I've gone and followed the footsteps of St. Paul. I've, uh, I've been to Fatima, uh, the last one before I left St. Robert's, a group we went to Poland. Now, I'm of Polish descent, 
so that was kind of special for me. I mean, the picture I have in my place of, of having mass in front of Our Lady of Chestahova, if you know what that means. I mean, for me, that is, that's big, you know? And all those things are wonderful. And if you've traveled and if you've gone on, on those, those wonderful religious trips, or even if you talk about your prayer experiences, Oh, those times, those times when you were on retreat, you know, those times when you were all by yourself and you were watering your roses on a sunny day like today and just felt overwhelmed by God's presence. All those things are terrific as long as they're not isolated and God is only there. God is not only in the Holy Land. And if you've never been or never get to the Holy Land, your life is not lacking, right? God is as present here. God is not just present at St. Peter's in Rome or, or on that retreat. God is present. The presence of the Lord is everywhere. And that becomes the lesson, how we're blind to that. In fact, I would say this. If you just find the Lord in the destination or go seeking him there, you're a tourist. But if you know him along the way during the journey, you're a pilgrim. And there's a big difference between the two. I think sometimes, you know, even by groups that we'd have to warn them, now we're going on a pilgrimage. We're not going to be tourists. We're not going to check off things in my bucket list that we have to see. We're going to be with each other and to pray along the way and to look for the opportunities to meet the Lord, not only at the destination, but along the way. And sometimes to travel overseas is difficult and yet to find the Lord along the way. The Second Vatican Council when it talked about the church, it didn't refer us to us as tourists. It says, no, no, we're a pilgrim people. And a pilgrim people who join, who journey, the, the journey of life from now to the kingdom. And we do well when we know how to journey with each other. And to journey with the Lord every moment. A prophet is not without honor, except in the ordinary things of life. And so the invitation is... I think summer can help us to do this, you know, this time of year, but it's to open our eyes to that. One of my favorite people, I may have talked about him here, one of my favorite people is uh, Brother David Stendelrast. He's the um, uh, Benedictine monk from Austria. I, I always check, I checked over before the weekend to make sure he's still alive. He's 97. I mean, really, I mean, great, great. He's written books. And, his, and the theme of his, of his preaching and his life is, is being grateful, and you'll be happy when you're grateful. But the gratefulness becomes in everything, in everything, not just the big things. We can, we're always grateful for the big things, but grateful for everything. So and he has a TED Talk you can always find, and I think it's in the TED Talk. He talks about uh, going to Africa and being without electricity. And when he came back, he said, oh, my gosh, I've, I've taken electricity for granted. He, he said he started putting stick -em notes uh, by the switches so he'd be grateful. Silly, right? No. The one I like even better, he told personally, I was with him some years ago on kind of a workshop, and uh, he, he, was talking about, he was talking about watering your roses, for instance. And imagine you're watering your roses, he said, and you know, you're, you're over them and the, the aroma. Oh, you know what that's like. The smell of those roses is just overwhelming and so beautiful. And you finish doing that and you're walking down the street and you walk past a garbage dump. Ugh, and you're kind of holding your nose. And Brother, da <laughs> Brother David said, the garbage dump is no worse of a smell. It's just more interesting. <laughs> and I always thought to have a spirituality like that, to have that spirituality that is so present to the Lord and his creation in everything, not just the big things of life, but in everything 
and even the things that maybe we've never thought about that are somehow still God's creation, to immerse ourselves in God's creation and to know his presence. A prophet is not without honor except in his native place. And you and I, we live in our native places, our houses, with our family, with our neighbors, with our workplace. It's our native place. How do we take it for granted so often to have the awareness of God's presence, especially there, to have the spirituality, the awareness of Brother David, oh, to have that spirituality